Well, that should be working. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here today. I don't know why that monitor keeps shifting directions on me here, but uh, that's a little bit better. Okay. Anyway, thank you for being here today. We are at the Greater San Diego Association of Realtors, and my name is Kevin Burke, and there's my telephone number, and there is my email address, and I prefer to speak with you in person, but, um, you know, sometimes when I'm doing a webinar or whatever, it's difficult to do that, um, but uh, you can always send me an email, and so uh, anyway, I want to thank you all for being here today. Um, Email is usually the best way to get a hold of me. Um, so I have some credentials, I guess, that make me qualified to speak about the subject matter today. Um, it is uh, we're going to be talking about CRS tax, uh, but we're also going to be talking about how to make money at it. So um, um, probably should have opened up the MLS window, <laughs> but I didn't do that quite yet. So uh, I do have a broker's license in California. I have a broker's license in other states as well. I've been doing real estate for, since 1979. So I'm getting kind of good at this. And at one point, I ran a foreclosure department for a very large brokerage uh, in uh, Tucson, Arizona, um, the the, the uh, pre-foreclosure department. And, and at that time, the situation was very different. At that time, the lenders never talked to us about about short sales or anything like that. That was a uh, that came about in the in the mid two thousands, um, and that's when that phenomenon occurred. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But uh, in the meantime, we'll get past all this. Um, you know, I, I do teach continuing education for attorneys. I taught legal aspects of real estate at the college level, uh, and I am going to be chair of legal affairs next year for the California Association of Realtors, and obviously a whole bunch of things that that I do that are risk management related things. So uh, just wanted to make you aware of that. We're going to be talking about stuff that's going to appear to be legal. I am not a practicing attorney. I, I do a lot of trial work, but it's limited uh, to testifying as an expert witness, usually in defense of brokerages. Um, standard of care is my specialty, agents' duties of inspection and disclosure, market conditions in San Diego. Um, our, our conversation today is uh, not intended to be a substitute for the uh, advice of your broker, nor for that of your attorney. Please consult with them as appropriate. So uh, I am happy to help you in any way that I can, but I will not interfere with your relationship with your uh, with your brokerage. So that's just the way it's going to be. Uh, that being said, uh, our webinars are intended to be interactive. Um, please utilize the Q&A button um, to ask questions or offer input. Uh, I do look forward to hearing from you. Um, in the beginning, when I was doing these, the way before the COVID era, um, I was doing these webinars and we had... Um, um, I guess that's why I still do them is that they just became very popular. But uh, we had a problem with Zoom, which still uh, carries through today. And that is that the um, um, frequently if we would unmute you, so, you know, you would go hot mic uh, and then the program would, would uh, you know, we, you would mute yourself again so we could carry on after the questions were answered. Um, but But then but then sometimes it unmuted you at the worst possible time. So it was just kind of a quirk in the program. So we haven't been able to do that. Um, I'd rather be standing in front of you in a room, you know, talking about what I'm talking about. And, and I did just get done. I did the, I did a present couple of presentations for NAREB and CARREB up in uh, Oakland uh, last week. Very excited. I just, I always have a great time uh, when I'm doing that. Uh, my, my RPA class, uh, has been approved by the Department of Real Estate for five hours of continuing education credit. Um, I'm hoping that San Diego will pick that up. You know, it, I don't know how that's going to go. Um, and then also my buyer representation class, which is going to be the hot topic for years to come, that is uh, approved for three hours of continuing education credit. So uh, uh, we'll be uh, offering those across the state of California here coming up. I know I'm being asked to speak again in Los Angeles uh, uh, shortly. So uh, uh, anyway, I, I do want to thank you all for being here. Um, this class purposefully is not DRE approved, um, but that doesn't mean it's not a great class. So uh, anyway, that being said, if you have a question, please Q&A button makes it really easy for me to respond to you. So welcome to your MLS week, I call it. Um, essentially, this morning we did MLS rules, and that was a lot of fun. Um, this afternoon, we're going to be doing CRS tax and, and how to find pre-foreclosure property. So I'm going to show you the setup with a lot of that. And, and, uh, and this class is for new agents, but it's also uh, for continuing agents so that uh, 
you know, because there's a lot of information that's going to be in here that is going to really surprise you. Um, I have a lot of material that I've prepared. Um, I, I always research these uh, to a great extent, and I am uh, more than happy to send you all of my work product. I don't have a problem with that. Send me an email, be specific about what you're looking for, and, and uh, I will send that to you. So uh, um, that being said, on Tuesday, we'll be back. We'll be doing MLS Fast Stats. Now, I think that's probably one of the best programs that uh, SDAR gives you for free. And that's where you can pull up a snapshot of, of the economy in particular zip codes and particular parts of the county, uh, things like that. Uh, you go through the pre-foreclosure report, for example, uh, and some other things that you can do with that. Uh, and, and in fact, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to show you that here today as well so that you'll have it for our topic matter. Uh, and then Collaboration Center. We'll be talking about the Collaboration Center. Um, if you're like me, been around, uh, I've been doing real estate since before we had email, um, before cell phones, if you can believe that, before fax machines. Um, and I just think that the Collaboration Center is the hottest thing out there. I really like that program. Uh, everyone that I have spoken with about that program has converted to it and just will not send out emails again uh, through through uh, any of the other media. So so certainly a great little program to be using. And, uh, and I'm seeing a lot of uh, uh, repeat offenders. Hey, Rory. Uh, repeat offenders from this morning that are that are back. Uh, thank you all for being here, and I intend to make this quite worth your while. So, uh, member benefits. So, thank you for joining us for our discussion of MLS, CRS tax, and finding pre foreclosure property. So, let's go ahead. I want to launch into it here, and uh, we're going to go to the uh, screen real quick, uh, and I'm going to take us to our MLS. Uh, because that's kind of where we're going with all of this stuff. So uh, my realtor login, but I promised you fast stats really quick. So you see right here on the homepage, I'm going to click on fast stats. That's how I want to start all this uh, off. And, and so uh, I think, unfortunately, it is not behind the firewall, um, but that's okay. Uh, they just haven't figured out how to do that yet. In the meantime, this is what fast stats look like. And so I told you that there is a lender mediated report. That's this part down here. And that gives you a report for the entire county of San Diego. Um, and so the most recent one, I can uh, knock it down by uh, months, uh, but I'm going to use the most recent one. And it's going to compare traditional sales to REOs and short sales. So REO is a real estate owned. A short sale is is where the property is being sold for less than the encumbrances against it. Um, sometimes that includes your commission. Um, in a lot of cases, it does. Uh, when I was doing these uh, for this uh, company back in uh, the 80s, um, a lot of times I help people, uh, you know, stay away from foreclosure. But at the same time, you know, I didn't get paid because uh, there just wasn't any margin in there. So, um, but then later on in the 2000s, we found that, that uh, there were so many foreclosures that were happening uh, that, uh, that they had to, uh, the government had to step in and give incentives to lenders to, to do short sales rather than to uh, just foreclose on the property because that's all they did. They would foreclose on the property. And, but today they have, they get, they get bounce backs, they get all kinds of stuff. Um, and, and in fact, it's a, a disincentive for the lender to uh, foreclose on a property because they have to put that money back into the account, um, uh, you know, and put it in reserves rather than with a short sale where they may not have to do that. So I'm just going to click on this really quick. It's going to say view report. Um, can you see that? OK, good. So anyway, I'm pulling up an example of it. Uh, we're not going to focus on this. I'm just letting you know that that's where it is. Um, but this obviously, as you can tell, the uh, numbers of uh, uh, lender mediated properties is way down in San Diego County. But right here, we're seeing a little bit of an uptick again. And, I, and we have a, a bankruptcy attorney who is a broker in our office who says he hasn't seen this many in a long, long time. So uh, so be aware it's uh, it, it's coming. Uh, I think that's going to be our market uh, in the next couple of years. Um, there's a, a, a really good real estate agent out of uh, La Jolla who, who focuses on um, uh, short sales. Uh, he says, I always want to work on what's coming three years from now, so I'm always ready for it. Uh, and so he does a really good job. So just I wanted to make that available to you so you knew that it was out there. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to log in uh, because I want to take a look at uh, 
my uh, CRS tax. So when I do log in, a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, when I do log in, I always log in here to what we refer to as the San Diego one page. Okay, so this is the the one right up here at the top says San Diego one, um, and that's the San Diego one page, which refers to single sign on. So uh, here's a whole list of programs that SDAR has made uh, for you as a member benefit, so that you can log into this page. That gives you access to the three different ways to look at the MLS. I've got access to zip forms. I've got access to Glide. I've got RPR, ah, CRS data. So I can go to CRS data to get where we're going to be talking about today, but I can also log into Paragon. It's going to take me to the same place. So I go ahead and I click on Paragon. I'm checking the computer behind me to make sure that we're in the right, in the same place. There you go. Okay. So uh, I can go to Paragon and I can click right uh, here where it says tax. Or I can go back to that previous page uh, and I can click on uh, CRS data and that's going to take me to the same place as if I clicked on tax. Okay, does that make sense? Um, so, so two different ways to get there. I can click on tax here or I can uh, just, I can go back to that uh, one page and click on CRS data. So great little program. So let's talk a little bit about that. And again, please, if you have a question, please put it into the Q&A field because you know I really do want to answer. Hi, Joe. Uh, and uh, I really do want to answer your question. So so this is how we're going to go after. Um, first of all, I got to say, I got to show you the setup, how we're going to set up the program so that, um, there we go. Uh, and in, in doing that, you see all of my information over here. Um, so, you know, we the, the some of the stuff prints. So, you know, I've got to have my name as it appears on my license. I've got to have my affiliation with the brokerage. I'm going to go over here to the right-hand side. I'm going to click on settings. Um, and when I click on settings, it gives me this box here. Now, again, it looks like a lot of stuff to do, but there really isn't much to do here. I'm going to tell you that focus on the simple. Don't don't go crazy in here because because if you do, then we might have a trouble have trouble getting it to come back later. So in this part of the program, um, I've got my branding. I'm probably going to use that. I'm probably going to use the email address and all the rest of it. I'm just going to leave it alone. So I'm under the branding tab right now, and on the left hand side, it gives me uh, it gives me a place to to. Uh, put my uh, company logo up there. Remember, DRE says that you either must have your logo or some reference to the company in order to be compliant. And NAR says the same thing. So, so there's our logo as, as Linda likes it. Um, and, uh, you know, I can remove the image. I can add my branding to reports, which I do. And I would recommend that you do that. Um, if you either you have a logo of your own for your own uh, team or whatever, or your company's uh, information. So I'm going to make sure that that's on there. Remember, that's what's going on up here. That's why that's up here at the top. Okay. And then over here on the right hand side, I'm doing <clears throat> my name. Uh, again, you saw that a second ago up top, the company name my phone number. Um, I don't uh, use my cell phone number uh, in any of my media. Uh, my email address, again, you know, it's our company's email address, so I use the branded email. Uh, and then I've got my uh, California DRE broker number. That's my broker number, um, uh, 01000175. Yes, I've been a around a long time, uh, but not as long as Joe has been around. Joe's license is a 0055 number. I'm just always amazed uh, and, and again, I love Joe dearly. He's such a great guy. He's a broker in our office. He's been a broker since uh, the beginning of time, uh, ex-Marine and, and uh, uh, Vietnam vet. And uh, he's got some amazing, so I always love talking with Joe. So so anyway, put your DRE number there. You can put your company's DRE number. In fact, I could change this one. I could put our, our company's 01995787 happens to be our company's brokerage number. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there so you'll have both. The DRE says says that the whole point behind having the DRE number, and by the way, CAR are the one that promoted all this. So CAR said, we really think that people should be able to identify the license status of people that they're working with. And so um, uh, they, they did legislation requiring it, and now the DRE follows that legislation. So, you know, in the old days, we would wait for what was the DRE going to come up with. Now we pretty much direct traffic that way. We create legislation, just like you're going to probably see legislation requiring the buyer representation agreement. 
uh, at the first of the year. That's when I'm kind of thinking uh, Virginia did this in July of last year. Um, they made it a requirement that if you don't have a buyer representation agreement with somebody, then you may not be paid. So in a real estate transaction. So, you know, just for so many years, we've been complacent about the fact that, that, you know, we get paid by virtue of the third party uh, beneficiary relationship between the buyer's agent and the seller's agent with their contract with their seller. Um, but we're not going to, we're probably not going to be able to rely on that anymore. So, um, so that's just kind of where it's going. So stay tuned for that. Uh, my email address, obviously, you know, that uh, that's already in there. All of the rest of this, you know, I'm defaulted to San Diego County because because I like San Diego County. I do a lot of business in San Diego. Um, but, you know, you can also that's just my default. I'll show you in a minute. You can actually change all that information to to other uh, counties <clears throat> in a search. <laughs> my search settings, I'm going to keep it simple because I'm simple. I don't like to make things too complicated. My map directions, um, map starting point is going to be my office address. Um, and by the way, when you go into the mapping feature in the MLS, it will always default to your office address unless you change that. OK, so uh, that's not today's class, but you can see there's my office address in there. My uh, zip plus uh, four is in there as well. Um, my saved criteria. Um, I don't have any because I really I didn't. Uh, uh, I didn't want to change anything. My save results don't have any of those either. Uh, it looks like I might have uh, created uh, one that I just kind of threw together uh, where that, oh, you know what, that's just something I would have done. So let me get rid of that. Um, showing it as an example must be between three and all right. So what the heck? Okay. So I'm going to ignore it. All right. Uh, can I default it? Oh yeah, there we go. You sure you want to delete the save? I, I don't want to delete anything. Okay. Remember if you delete it, we can't get it back. So uh my saved results, my custom results list, my combo, all this stuff is all just stuff that that are things that, um, you know, that uh, you're just going to end up going down a rabbit hole. That's what I'm going to tell you. OK, so so uh, but but we're going to talk about some really good stuff here today. So those were my settings and those are important because I want you to be DRE compliant. And that's that's what this is going to affect. So I'm going to go back to my previous. And so there you get to see the logo again up there. And you've got we've got a couple of headings up here at the top. One of them is property search, which is the default. So we are in that property search right now. Now, looking at it as a tree, property search. And we'll talk about power prospecting uh, later. But property search, I've got property and I've got foreclosure. OK, so uh, when I show you how easy this is, you're going to think, wow, this is crazy. So property notice there's my default uh, San Diego County or I could put some other uh, save results in there. And as I said, I didn't save any, so I, I won't have them here. I'm going to put in I can put I can do a lot of things here. I can put in the owner's last name. Um, I can put in the address, the subdivision, the APN number or even the MLS number. All right. Then we have a little whatever you see a question mark. It, it's usually going to give you information. Use a wild card. Um, the the percentage sign if you want to get variations of the term, or if you're not sure about spelling, etc. The example uh, Lake would yield Lakeside, Lakeview, and Cooper Lake. I think that's great great advice. Okay. So um, and then I have my advanced search and my map search. Um, and uh, down here, you can see recent properties I've searched for, uh, most of which we've had under contract at one point or another. Um, so I do always check the tax record. OK, so um, and then over here on the right hand side, my saved property results. Um, that's just I always I pick on Jeff. I sold that property to Jeff back in uh, years ago now, 15 years ago. Um, I regret it ever since to this day. But, uh, you know, you can't keep them all right. So uh, it was just time to make that one go away. So here's all my list. Now I can show I'm only showing five results, but obviously I can show a lot more. Um, so but what I do want to show you is one other thing about why this is so important. So let's go back over here to Paragon. Um, and from within Paragon, I want to input a listing. OK, so I'm going to input a residential listing and uh, let's see, load recovered data. Uh, Please just continue loading new listing input form. Uh, I don't know what that means. OK, so I'm going to pull. Apparently, I started a listing in the earlier class today that I never that I didn't save. I didn't finish it. So so this is what I wanted to show you. This has to do with CRS tax. So right here, this little drop down right there, Joe, you see that one? CRS tax autofill. I'm going to I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to pull it up. You know, I'm going to pull up 
uh, again, here I go. I'm going to be picking on Jeff, but, uh, and, you know, super guy, you know, he just rented that property out. It was really, uh, you know, I thought he was going to stay there forever. So I'm going to type in San Diego. So there's an R there, which means it's a required field. Now, this is, again, when I'm inputting a listing. And so it's like, nobody tells you this. And this is the coolest stuff. So it says zero up here because I don't have enough information down there yet. Now I can put in the first name, the last name, I can do all that stuff. I can put in a street number. So let's, let's you know, again, 811, again, as I tab out, still not enough to give me any results, but under street name, I'm gonna type in America, okay? And then I'm gonna hit the space bar, and then I'm gonna hit way, okay? And then I'm gonna tab out of that and look what it says, there is one property. Well, yeah, so here I am inputting the listing for America Way, okay? I do a search button and then and then it's going to pop up um, the tax ID number. So uh, why is this important? Because I'm going to click on the tax ID number and I'm gonna go back up to that green dropdown that says autofill and I'm gonna click on it. And then what that's going to do, can you see that? Yes, you can. So that is going to pull up the tax data. Now, remember, I always say this in all of my classes and I'm a big rules enforcement guy. I always say, Anything you change from the tax record, you have to be prepared to defend it. Okay, so you know what are my key ingredients in here? So, so here's a bunch of information. Uh, it's a two bedroom. It's got thirteen hundred twenty six square feet. Now it's a townhouse. I wouldn't change that again unless I'm prepared to defend that, right? You know, um, but but sometimes you'll have owners who will say, well, it's really sixteen hundred square feet because I have this room addition. And then your first question is, is it permitted? Because it doesn't show up in the tax record that way. Okay. Uh, no fireplace, but you all see all this information. So uh, going down through here, it's the county. Here's the year built, 1985. Significant, right? Because because now I know I'm I'm not going to be subject to lead paint disclosure um, and not earthquake in California either. Um, but I am still going to have maybe a defensible space, uh, you know, something like that. So I'm going to hit my save button. And so down here <laughs> where we had 76 fields that I had to fill out that were required, I'm now down to 55. So essentially just by knowing who I am, by you know, put saying I want to input a residential listing, it's got all that up here. And then it, and then I've got literally 21 fields that have been completed because I did the tax, the tax autofill. Is everybody good with that? I want to make sure that that uh, everybody understands what I'm doing. This is the fastest, easiest way to get accurate data, including the, the APN number in there. And again, a lot of the stuff bleeds from this, right? Um, so, and then from here, you know, they filled in a lot of the R fields um, and even some of the non-R fields like the zoning. Um, and so there's my year built and all that. And then and I'm going to fill in the commissions and and all of these things. So is everybody good with that? This is going to fill in a lot of data for me, uh, making it a lot easier for me to proceed forward with the listing. Okay. So um, I'm not going to I'm not going to save the listing because whoops, loud noise. Uh, because obviously we're not going to input a listing. Every once in a while, I do make a mistake, and and, and so uh, the our MLS is very. Uh, supportive of me when I'm doing this. So so anyway, everybody got that. I want to make sure we're clear on that. Um, you can see how much that did fill in, okay? Um, so spinning back over to our tax information, I wanted to show you there just a second ago how important the tax data is. The program will actually pull the data into your listing um, and fill in quite a few of your fields. And again, like I said, I wouldn't be changing anything unless you're prepared to defend that change. Okay. All right. You know, you'll get a house. I sold a house in uh, Del Mar. The, the house was uh, um, uh, 1,300 square feet on the tax record. Um, the appraiser went out to the property and measured it was 1,800 square feet. And of course, the buyer is having a stroke about it, right? But uh, the buyer was just trying to figure out a way to get out of that transaction. But uh, needless to say, they moved forward with it anyway because. The square sometimes, and I've had trial work on this. Sometimes the square footage, as represented in the tax record, is not accurate. So uh, it can be a lot of reasons for that. But you know, we're not going to go into that today. Okay. So that being said, let's go back over to my tax data. Uh, so I got my county. Um, we looked up uh, uh, Jeff. Uh, we can go ahead and do that again here. Uh, so his, uh, his, his his the street address of the property is eight one one. And then America, and notice how the the drop down automatically occurs, uh, and then it gives you it narrows the results for you. So if I back out of America a little bit, 
we'll see that you know it's got amethyst cord could have been in there. Um, uh, everything that starts in A, there's a ton of properties, but we're going to do America Way. So we're going to click on 811 America Way, um, and it's automatically going to take us to the, the property report. Okay, so what we do in our office when we're going to write an offer on property, we always do this before we write the offer. Um, and then down here on the right hand side, we see the name of the owner of the property. So we always want to put the owner, the owner's name as a, as a matter of record. We always want to put the owner's name in the, in the offer. Don't, don't use owner of record. Uh, it creates an ambiguity in the contract. And, and so you're going to have a problem with that. Um, and uh, uh, owner of record or on file, all those, I don't know who started that, but that's just not going to work because it doesn't create a contract. It, it creates a contract with somebody by the name of owner of record and owner of record doesn't own the property. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, I actually had somebody question me on that the other day. The uh, um, there was a, a, a flipper who who was writing an offer on a listing that that I was uh, uh, counseling with, and uh, and I told him I said you've got you know uh, owner of record in there. You, you, he says I've been doing I've done it hundreds of these, and I said I know you've been doing them wrong. <laughs> so you know because you really didn't have a contract, um, but but you know they closed. I guess everything's okay then, right? I said I, I don't know. I don't like that because usually you know when somebody's trying to get out of something, that's that's when everybody calls me. Okay, so so uh, so anyway, I have my uh, I have my information here. It doesn't have any uh, pictures in it. Uh, there's my map of the area, uh, map of the area for the property right there. So it, it's a townhome complex. This unit happens to be located right on the end here. Uh, it's right over Flower Hill Mall. I'm pretty sure it's still called that. Um, and so then scrolling down, I see the address, but I also see that zip plus four again, right, which I always use. Um, it's a townhome. The improvement type is condominium. So it's a legal description of it is that it's a condo. Um, and uh, then the uh, some of you don't know what that is, but that's the old Thomas Brothers map coordinates. Um, so um, if I want the sand just report, you know, I can click on that button there and then it it pops up. I think it's going to tell me I haven't paid for the subscription to to, uh, you know, because they want money from you at that point. I've done so many of these. I've probably gone past my limit, but but uh, it's loading or at least trying to load. So we're going to let it go ahead and load. I'm going to take us back to our report. I can also look at the property report card. Um, again, you'll notice in there that it said that the square footage was 1,326 square feet. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to show you, we're going to let that keep spinning, I guess. Look at that. Huh? Um, so uh, we'll let it keep spinning because it's not important what we're doing. So here's my APN number. So all this is the information that got imported into the MLS. And this system is called CRS, which is Courthouse Retrieval System, which is a much better system than we had before. We had one before called Realist, uh, and that one was just really uh, data entry. So a lot of times people were, were uh, you know, they were actually inputting the information uh, live. And so a lot of mistakes were being made. It created some real problems for us. Okay. So, so this says owner occupied, even though the MLS indicates that he's uh, just uh, leased it out to someone else. Um, school zone information. There you go. You're looking, you know, always, always refer to the government, you know, uh, for your data. Don't quote school districts, you know, without having, uh, you know, having a uh, quoting a source for that. Um, I had one of our agents uh, hit me back the other day with, uh, you know, be the source of the source, not the source. Um, because you you don't want to you, you always want to give credit to where you got the information according to the county tax record you your child would go to Earl Warren Middle School that kind of thing okay all right and we got a history of the property looks like I sold it to him in sixteen I guess that's not that long ago seven years ago right um, uh, seven yeah seven years ago five hundred seventy five is probably worth somewhere near a million right now and so uh, but that's all right you know I continue to buy property and stuff like that so uh, so um, uh, my tax assessments if any uh, and then my taxes uh, that won't probably be important to anybody here but when I click on view tax details this is interesting information so it pops up this window so so as I always say in my classes, there's no such thing as a property that doesn't have an assessment on it in San Diego County. All right. So and so so what am I talking about? So I'm looking in here. I've got the uh, 
Coastal Rail Trail for four dollars. I've got the uh, CSA 17 Emergency Ambulance Service for thirty four dollars. I've got my Radio Equipment Zone for four dollars. My Water Availability uh, CWA stands for California Water Authority. That's ten dollars. I've got my Fire Benefit Fee for fifty dollars. Mosquito Surveillance three dollars. Uh, Metropolitan Water Standby Charge eleven dollars. And then there's my Sewer Service Charge. $614. So the city of Del Mar has realized that, uh, that they can uh, make a lot of money off of, uh, of um, uh, water. Uh, clearly, I, I personally think it's a tax. You know, I love Del Mar. That's one of my websites, frankly. But, but uh, you know, they, they, do, they do get you. So, uh, you know, my water bill at my house in Del Mar and I'm oceanfront, and that's $385 a month, boy, every single month. Ugh. Um, and then my Solana Beach Lighting Zone, that's $8. And then my Vector Disease Control, that's for rodents, that kind of thing, $5. And all that adds up to $746. So don't tell me that that property doesn't have any assessments against it, right? So I often see that incorrectly labeled in the uh, MLS. But uh, I'm going to print this. I'm going to have the buyer, you know, I print it, I save it to a PDF, and then have the buyer sign it. Okay. All right. So that's my tax details. Then my mortgage history, which may not be important. Uh, um, but is there a foreclosure history? And there, there were no foreclosure uh, uh, data found on this. And, and by the way, foreclosures is a misnomer in California because we don't have foreclosures. We have trustee sales. Um, foreclosures are, are, are usually a judicial foreclosure. States like Florida, you know, they have uh, mortgages, which means two parties, mortgage or mortgagee. That's going to become important in a minute. Um, but then in, in California, we don't have mortgages. We have loans secured by deeds of trust. And again, this is a year of law school. Um, you, you don't need to go to law school. I'll tell you what you really need to know here. But uh, we have loans secured by deeds of trust. So in mortgage state, we have two parties. And trust uh, trust sale state, we have three. We have a trust or a trustee and a beneficiary, right? Um, and so in a mortgage state, the borrower actually has title to the property in in a uh, trust state, uh, otherwise known as a title theory state. Um, we have uh, the the title is held by the trustee, so uh, on behalf of the beneficiary, which is the bank. Okay, so so we don't have any foreclosures on the books. We've got a bunch of more information that came out of that property, um, and and then you know here's even some more two car attached garage. That was a, a really nice feature. I never lived in the home. I actually uh, bought it from. Uh, a guy that I sold it to and I told him he could live there for the rest of his life, you know, rent free. And, and, uh, uh, he chose to leave for some weird reason, but, um, anyway, um, I bought it from, I had sold it to him and then I bought it from him. Um, okay. So, uh, what else, anything else in here significant it says my school district is Solana beach. My number two is San Diego. Um, and then down here, I actually get the, the, the uh, subdivision name for searching purposes. We'll see. That'll be important in a minute too. And then I also have my FEMA flood zone. So area of minimal flood hazard. Uh, this property is way up on a hill. So, I mean, there got to be a lot of problems in California when this one goes underwater. So, um, so it's up high on a hill. Uh, okay. Um, and again, you got the, the uh, San Diego River running right down through there. And so um, that river, um, you know, is an active river. The only thing that's keeping it from being, having more water in it is the uh, Lake Hodges Dam. So, um um, but it's always a potential dam inundation that the dam could flood and that kind of thing. So I can go here to the firm panel and pull that information up. Um, no listing uh, listings found for this parcel. Again, it's not on the market right now. Learn more about flood insurance from floodsmart.gov. That's a website. There you go. You can see it. Uh, and uh, that's going to be enough of that. Okay, everybody good? All right. So I'm going to go back here. I can save my report. I can go to the next one. I can do all these things in here. Um, but, um, uh, that's how I use the service to find a particular property. Okay. So let's go back, um, to, uh, oh, oh, I forgot to tell you. So up here, I have my comparables. When I click on that, I can do a CMA and a client report. I can do a quick CMA. Let's do the CMA and a client report. <clears throat> and so, you know, who are you creating this for? Um, this is going to create that program for you. So I told you it was probably going to come in around a million, um, here's the last sales price. Um, you know, what's it worth today? So look at that average sales price in the area of million four thirteen. 
um, based on square footage. Yeah, we're probably going to be close to a million. So, you know, th that's that's what happens when I click on my comparables and I can change this criteria. I can create a report for that um, by clicking on that. I get the I get this report. Um, I can add a client to it. I can edit the report. I can do all these things. Um, and when I click on it, uh, can you see that? Yes, you can. Okay, so you know, normally it would it would uh, pull up a report for you, but that's those are my comparables. That's what happens when when I click on the comparables button. I can also click on the prospecting button, which is particularly uh, fun for me because by going there, it's going to take me to um, essentially what we're going to use in a minute to do our our uh, our pre foreclosure. Okay, so um, so again, um, uh, I, I get under we're under power prospecting now, and and so here. I, I've got uh, the street name, I've got the zip code, I've got the subdivision name. So I can literally hit my submit button and, and it should pull me up a list, which by the way, shows up down at the bottom. So there are 34 properties in that area. Now, now mind you, this is if you're gonna be like farming to the area or marketing to the area in any way, this is a great way to pull this all up. Um, uh, let me see, I'm looking for uh, who, who is, uh, Somebody I got into this today and they did not show up. Okay, well, all right, it's on the link. Okay, so um, there are 34 properties that meet the criteria. And again, what was the criteria? It was America Way on the street. Um, and, and there's the legal description of the area. Now, now, if you're familiar with what this complex is called Spindrift, if you're familiar with it, there's two phases to it. The, the top part of the community are the bluffs, and they sell for a, a third to a half, again, what the lower properties sell for. Um, so, but this is only going to pull up the ones that have a street name that says uh, America Way, Okay. All right, so I clicked on my submit button. It says there are 34 properties, um, exports remaining 5,000. Uh, every time you do this, that number goes down. But every time you log back in, it's back up at 5,000 again. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, so then I have my legend. So my green buttons are my for sale properties. My uh, And boy, whoa, look at this. Nothing. Nothing for sale in there. Um, my uh, uh, blue button says it's sold already. Um, and then I have a handful of expires. So I don't have any pre-foreclosures in here. Um, but I do have two expired listings, okay? So now I want to show you how to go to labels and exports. There, there's more property, by the way. So if I click on number two, it gives me a couple more and, and both of those are, are uh, sold property. So, uh, you know, we're looking pretty good there. So, but I do want to go to my labels and my exports because that stuff's kind of cool, actually. Um, so I'm going to do that um, in case I want to send marketing pieces out into the neighborhood. Um, I'm going to click on that button. Again, I'm back under property search now, uh, export label options, uh, skip records with no zip code. That's So I have set all of these fields, um, depending on how you want your program to read it. Um, you know, these are all going to print on my uh, Avery labels later. OK, so my 5139, I think, or 5165s, which one are they? They're uh, 5160s. So they're going to print on my 5160s. So, so uh, again, you put the labels in the printer and then you'll, you'll print. So skip records with no zip plus four zip codes. Uh, remove exact duplicates. That's important because sometimes the property will show up a couple of times. Um, uh, and you don't necessarily want to send more than one mailing piece to the same property if that's what you're going to do. So this will literally create, um, not only will it create your labels for you, but you can actually uh, create a, a farming list, which is what I recommend if you're going to go knocking on doors and things like that, that you create actually a list um, that you can edit, okay? And that's why I do everything in the Excel format, okay? So I, I'm not an expert on Excel. I don't think you need to be. Um, I've got Linda. Linda's, you know, she's brilliant when it comes to that stuff. Uh, and she'll, uh, you know, she'll uh, she'll fix what I did wrong. <laughs> so I guess that's what it is. So anyway, so my export, my label options are up here. That's for labels. Um, and then I wanted to address um, uh, first name first, uh, and then the owner's address of the property. So uh, versus, you know, in the owner's address, the property may not be the um, um, occupant of the property, right? So we'll, we'll see that in a minute when we look at it, that some of the owners are going to be, um, you know, Colorado Springs, for example. Um, so I, I got to make a choice whether or not 
I want to address it to the owner's address. So that's when I'm marketing offsite properties or whether or not I want to go straight to the property address where the owner is offsite. That means I probably have a tenant in there and maybe I'm farming to, you know, why rent when you can buy kind of things. OK. All right. So that's kind of a neat little feature of that program. Um, and then I go down to my create, export, merge the files. So um, I'm having it include additional fields, Mr. and Mrs., first, middle, and last names, if available. Uh, again, select columns, Excel. Uh, you can click on any of these other things over here. I I'm going to recommend you not do that. Um, over here on the right-hand side, if you're using Top Producer, I guess they're still in business. Um, and they have several features that are uh, that will synchronize with that. Again, I've only got 40, uh, 34 of them. Uh, and then down here, I've got my Create My Label. So if I was just going to create a file right now, let's click on Create uh, on Export File. So I clicked on Export File. You can see that a pop-up occurred. I'm going to take that to um, my desktop because that's just going to be easier for me to find it later. My CRS prospecting export. I'm going to click the save button. I'm going to open it. And then that's going to require uh, Excel. And so you can't see that. So I need to share that screen with you. Uh, here it is. Okay. So this is going to give me my uh, my file to work on. And again, it's giving me the addresses in, in uh, essentially in walking order, okay? So, um, uh, and most of these, you're not gonna be crossing back and forth across the street. You'll be going up one side of the building and down the other. Um, here's 811, there's Jeff, um, two and a half baths. So this gives me a lot of data. You don't have to accept all of this data. You can use some of it or, or all of it, but now you have the ability to put it in your spreadsheet. Um, none of these happen to be a foreclosure. So I will talk about that uh, separately in a minute. Um, uh, and then as you can see, it gives you the owner's names. Um, it also gives you the uh, last sales prices of these properties. Tax amount, year bill, they're all pretty much billed about the same time. I actually had the the uh, honor of meeting Kim Fletcher, who who uh, uh, he has passed away, God rest his soul. Um, I actually sold his daughter a property in there. And I remember when I, I got to meet him and, and he owned a home federal bank, right? So he was the big guy there. And he had given a loan to the people that were building a, a, this property. Um, and uh, and they defaulted. They went they went back to the bank. The bank got it. And he said, I always wished, you know, after, because he had to foreclose on it and then had to, and then he sold off the balance of them. And he, and he says, I always, to this day, I always wished, as he's walking through the one that I'm selling his daughter, he says, I always wished I'd kept one of these for myself. Um, so, you know, that was pretty interesting comment for him to make. I mean, clearly, you know, he had, he had oceanfront properties in Del Mar and Point Loma. You know, he had, he was, he had done very, very well in life. Um, and, and yet here he was saying, I wish I'd kept one of these to myself, uh, as he's walking through the one that I'm selling to his daughter. And so, uh, um, uh, just a little tidbit story, but I mean, you learn all these things as you go through, you know, life. But this gives me my list. So from here, I can go ahead and create a spreadsheet on this where I can add notes, fields, things like that, so that I can write things down. So as I'm going door to door, um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna have this printed on my my uh, 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 folder. What do you call that? The uh, clipboard. I'm gonna have it on my clipboard. Um, so that now I don't, rather than looking like, you know, somebody trying to sell them something, I'm looking like a survey taker, right? So uh, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to take notes and, you know, uh, you know, how old is your boy? When's his birthday? You know, stuff like that. Do you have a phone number I can reach you? Um, you know, things like that. Okay. Does that make sense? So it uh, gives you a lot to work on. That, that's why I like this feature of it. Um, and again, this is hot off the presses, county record right this minute. Um, you know, I'm doing this on a, on a Friday night, you know, title's gone home, whatever. I'm going to be able to do all that on my own. Everybody good with that? Okay. So that being said, I'm going to take us back now to the uh, create export. That was to merge the files. But what about my label? So let's take a look at my label feature. So in my label feature, I've got, um, and I'm not a strong believer in, in uh, labels, by the way. Uh, I think you should hand write them. I think 34 is not that onerous if you're going to do it once a month. But I, I think that, um, you know, labels make it, you know, people, when people um, open their mail, um, this is why I believe in postcards, but when people open their mail, 
um, you know, they tend to open it over a trash can. I know I do. Um, and so I went through our mail. I'm throwing stuff out, stuff that, you know, for other people, stuff that's, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, that it's clearly a correspondence of some kind trying to sell me something. You know, I'm just probably not going to open it. So uh, but I don't want them doing that to my stuff. All right. So remember, you got about six seconds. So uh, the first time they see it, you got about six seconds. And I again, I teach the master. My farm class was last week or the week before um, all about how to really own a neighborhood. Uh, I've been very successful with that over the years. So so in my label, I'm going to include the title on the first line. I'm going to include uh, a line uh, or current resident. So if again, if it's a non-owner property, I, I want it to hit the tenant, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I could also replace the name with custom text, stuff like that. So, so this is going to go to my 5160s, my Avery label types. There's a couple of different kinds. Of, the most common is going to be the 5160, but it could be 5161, 5162, whatever you're going to do. I do them in PDF. Um, you could do it in Word. It gets a little more complicated that way, but all right. Uh, what label do I want to start with? So I always want to make sure I include mine in the labels. You know, make sure that those mailing pieces are going out. In this case, I'm going to start with number one, but I can start with number five, right? Um, you know, in other words, don't print the first five, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'll put that back. Um, number of labels now is going to be 34. Now I want to create my label. So this is the part that always shocks people. So I'm going to do my create my label part, and uh, let's take a look and, and see what that looks like. And again, I'm going to have to share that with you. Uh, do I? Uh, no, I don't. Look at that. Okay, so it's going to print print up in there. So, you know, here's my labels. So here they are, you know, Jessica Cancel, you know, Cardi Family Trust, um, Chenoweth, uh, I think that's a real estate agent. You know, I'm usually looking through to see if I recognize anybody that has a license because I'm probably going to eliminate them uh, from my mailing pieces. Uh, I don't notice anybody offhand. Um, uh, Kay Kern, I think that's Kern Key. Uh, look at that. Roswell, Georgia, right? So when I see Roswell, Georgia, I know I'm not sending it to the, the owner in, in the property. If I send it to the property, it's not going to the owner. It's going to go to a tenant. Okay. All right. And, and maybe again, like I said earlier, maybe that's my intention. Maybe my intention is to farm the tenancy. Okay. Um, so then I've got um, uh, a property management company over here, probably not going to send them a letter. Uh, who else in there? Uh, David Moeller. I think that's an attorney. Um, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but uh, anyway, so you get the idea. I'm usually going through it and there's Jeff and he does have a real estate license. So probably not going to mail to him. Um, and then uh, here's here's this one. Uh, uh, Weaver uh, lives on Avocado Place, which is the cul-de-sac, essentially the cul-de-sac above the complex. So uh, you know, obviously picked up one of those, probably has some financing involved in it, but those are my mailing labels. And so those are going to print. Now I can just stick them right on the the uh, the piece that I'm mailing out. Is everybody good with that? I want to show you how to do that. Let's go back. <laughs> Excuse me. My, I'm still in that window. Okay. So let's go back. Of course. Uh, oh, here's the, uh, this, this finally showed up. So when we clicked on that parcel report earlier, look at all this information that you have in here. It actually pulled up all this, even tells me who the congressman is, tells me who the senator is. Uh, and uh, I, I would like, I like Pat Bates. Um, uh, so uh, it gives me a lot of information about the property. This is again, something I would probably print and load into your zip forms program. If you're using that for your uh, platform, um, partially because, you know, you want to keep everything that you do in a transaction all in the same place. Okay. All right. So I showed you how to create your labels. Um, I can always step back. I can always do a lot of things. I click on property search. It's going to take me back to the beginning. Um, and uh, based on how we're doing here, probably going to get you out a little bit early today. So let's take a look at that. So now I want to talk about my foreclosures. Okay. And so uh, we're obviously going to cover a, a much larger footprint than what we have been covering. So I'm going to click on my foreclosure button. And the program pops up again, San Diego County. All right. Uh, shifting my camera there. So it pops up San Diego County. Um, and so I'm going to show you here. This is where you got to pay close attention. So foreclosure type. So again, we're calling it a foreclosure just because that's the common language that people understand. But again, it's a, a, a notice of trustee sale normally. 
uh, is what, what has happened here. Notice of default has been filed. I'm sorry, notice of default. Now, remember, again, they own the property up until the sale occurs. All right. And so from, you know, a lot of times the way that that a uh, that this works in California, and I've got a lot of material to give you, but but the way it works in California is that um, the you, you send a payment in and some people play that game where they get it there right like the 16th. Um, if, you know, there's an unassessable grace period, you're still showing up as a late pay or a slow pay. Right. But but what happens is. It, it, uh, it, if you don't send the payment, that's what we're talking about. You don't send the payment or you send it so that it arrives late. That frequently happens. It gets there on the 17th, for example. The, um, the bank um, doesn't realize that it's late because it's got to go through several departments until the next payment. So they realize that the first payment showed up on the 17th. They're going to send it back, right? Why? Because it showed up late. And they want you to include your late fee in there. And so therefore, you know, your payment was late. So then they send it back. Well, by the time they figure out they've got to send it back, the second payment has, has become due. And then that payment is also going to be sent back because they, they, they didn't get the late fee on the first payment, right? So you see how this kind of has a, a tunnel effect. I'm telling you that only because it's going to be very important when you're talking with people about telling them the fact is they can sell their property up until the day of sale, um, technically five days prior to sale, and then after that, can't. But but uh, so I always like to tell them that. So 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 the the process is the notice of default gets filed. A lot of times, we you know, I, I had one uh, property that we tied it up for 27 months. So I mean that was over two years. Right. So there's a lot that goes involved in that. There's also this law that says that the bank may not dual track. They may not work the foreclosure at the same time they're talking with you about a short sale. So, um, again, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of information on that here in just a second. So so um, my foreclosure type, I'm going to click the drop down area. I'm not going to do all because an auction means it's up for sales and auctions too late. Right. I want to catch it before it goes to the bank. Okay, so I've got my pre foreclosure, I got my releases. Well, I want the pre foreclosure. All right, so the pre foreclosure is what we're talking about here. Um, and again, this presentation is just famous for this. This is the only active foreclosure records. I'm going to check that box. Okay, why? Because because if it's if it's coming off the block, then it's not going to work for me. So only active foreclosures, only properties that are actively being pursued. OK, I don't need the defendant. I don't need the document number. The defendant is usually going to be the owner of the property. Um, filing date uh, for, for laughs and giggles. I'm going to leave that alone for now. Auction date. I don't care about that. I don't care about the mortgage amount. Um, uh, maybe I want to only work high end of these properties. But remember, a lot of these properties, you know, if, 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 where I live in Del Mar, we, we have 5,500 housing units, only 2,200 of them are occupied, and only a small portion of those have mortgages against them. So banks can't foreclose against the property unless it's got a mortgage, right? And so people are paying cash for stuff. Uh, you, the only, you know, you can get tax lien that could take the property, or you could get a judgment lien of some kind that could take the property. But in most cases, we don't have that happen, okay? All right, so, um, so I am going to look at... Uh, I might want to limit the filing date, but I don't think I really need to. Sometimes they can go a long, long time. So I'm going to leave that alone. Please excuse the misspelled uh, more, mortgage versus mortgage. Um, and then I can put in the location. I'm probably not going to put this in here. I, me personally, I don't want to be doing properties out in, uh, in uh, El Centro. So I may do uh, zip codes. Okay. But for, for us, I want to show you the, the actual number. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to click on submit. So have very little information up there, only the active records. There are 2,036 properties. Do you think you can make some money off of that? Okay. So there are 2,036 properties in the San Diego County database that are, are uh, pre-foreclosure. Okay. All right. So now, again, I can always update my results. I can always change my criteria over here um, if I wanted to limit that. So, uh, but, but look here, I've got El Cajon, I've got Oceanside, um, and I always apologize in advance, you know, that, that uh, you may see somebody you know, you know, or at least that see their name up here that you might be familiar with them. But again, these are pre-foreclosure. Sometimes people are doing it on purpose. You know, we, we have, uh, uh, what do we call those, the uh, 
strategic foreclosures, um, things like that. Okay, so uh, so uh, all these properties are still available under the current owner until we find out more information. But you see the blue. This is what we were showing you earlier today. The very light blue shows up as our legend as pre foreclosure. Okay, so maybe I only want to do the ones that are fairly recent. So maybe I'll go back in here and I'll put the filing date. Um, maybe I'll make the filing, uh, I'll limit the filing date on it to uh, um, maybe only within the last, uh, what, three years. How's that? So back to 20. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to pick a, you know, October 20th, this one, and then uh, October 26th over here so that it completes my map. Otherwise, it'll say you give us a, a value to work with. I'm going to click on update results and let's take a look and see how this has all changed. And so I had 2036. But now I went back, I said, only go back three years and now I have 194. So I've been teaching this class for years and I don't know anyone yet who has tried to do what I'm telling you to do. Okay, I just don't think this is that complicated. I'm down now, I've got 194 properties. That's almost enough that, that I, would, I could self-address the envelopes myself. Okay, so a, a nice little letter that says, you know, hey, you know, uh, do you know anybody in the area is trying to sell their home or, or maybe is behind on mortgage payments? Never address them directly. Oh God, I can't believe it. You're losing your house to the bank. You don't want to do that. That's just, that's going to be tacky on a whole nother scale, okay? So uh, um, same thing, by the way, maybe you work off of this as a, as a door knocking. Maybe you knock on the doors of these properties. I mean, you as you can see, you're all over the county. So I've got uh, this one is uh, 92101. This one's 92102. There's 92101 again. Um, and uh, uh, 92115 or 92118. I can look at this on a map and, and then change the criteria. But but again, you can see that I'm going to be all over the place. Here's Escondido. There's Coronado. Coronado, I mean, that's going to be probably a pretty well-heeled place, right? That's going to be fairly expensive. So, uh, so you know, you want to limit the, the number that you're going to do. But I don't think 194 is not manageable. I think that's something you can probably create your own mailing list and do that yourself. Okay? All right. So what am I going to do? So uh, I've got uh, 194 properties that were... Uh, um, the filing date, uh, the mortgage date was between October of, of 2020 and, and uh, current to today's date. That was the mortgage date. I could also change it under the filing date. Um, so when the, when the foreclosure was filed. Um, so let's try that. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go back to, uh, I, I get the sense here that it's going to give me the same information. So I'm going there. I'm going to here. And then I'm going to clear um, this information, uh, this one here, uh, I'm going to leave it alone. Let's see what it does. Update results. And then I go up to the top and I still have 194 properties, which I kind of suspected would be what it would do. The map hasn't loaded yet. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm running five gigs of internet here. And uh, so sometimes, and I always tell people this, and hopefully it makes you feel better, but if the program's not working, don't assume that it's you. A lot of times it's the program. I can tell you, I have sat in zip forms for hours trying to get it to do what it's supposed to do. And I know what it's supposed to do, right? Because I teach that too. Uh, and sometimes, you know what? It's just useless. You got to back out of it, close the browser, go back in again. It's just the way of the world, okay? So, so what have I got? I've got my list. I mean, this list is going to be, pages long look at all this list here right here but look at this so i can go to page two right okay so you know hakumba right uh here's uh, rancho bernardo here's uh um and again uh, uh this is going to be uh uh fallbrook campo these are going to be all over the place okay um, but what have i got i go down here at the bottom and now see now I, I, I haven't checked any of these. If I check this box, it checks all of them, okay? So let's take a look. I'm gonna go ahead and here, remember my exports and labels, right? I could also print my list, okay? But I'm gonna do my, uh, well, let's print the list really quick. So I'm gonna print my list. Um, and again, uh, by default, always goes to PDF. So in this case, it's only gonna print that one, that one page, okay? Um, let's go backwards a little bit. I'm gonna uncheck that box. Um, and I'm going to go back to the beginning. So I'm going to uncheck this uh, and I'm going to go back. I only want to go back one page. So I'm going to go back to page one. 
then I want to have to start over again. And now what should happen is I'm going to check the box and this should do more than the, the one page. Let's see how it does. So I'm going to go down here, print my list. I uh, suspect that's not going to work either. Nope, it's not going to work. So what do you do? You go back down here where it says view results 15. Uh, how about view results 30? And then when I print my list, <laughs> now it'll be it'll be a little bit better. Okay, so uh, maybe I'm only doing them 30 at a time. There's my Adobe. Can you all see that? Um, yes, you can. Okay, so then here's here's my whole list. Now that's not going to print a list. Okay, so you know that is a way to do this. But let's let's get out of that. And I'm going to go back up here. Um, I'm sorry, back down here. Um, and I'm going to uh, now click my exports and labels. And I just realized it's showing 30 results, but I haven't uh, checked on all 30. So let's go back up here. Let's click on this box. So now that should check all of them. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to do my exports and labels. And I showed you how to do that just a second ago. Same thing, right? Here's my exports and labels. I got 4,932 left. Um, I've got my uh, merge files. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, again, I do it in Excel. I can create my labels. I've already set up the default language for all of that. Um, and so here I am creating default labels for 194 uh, properties, okay? So uh, can you see that? Yes, you can, okay, good. So I'm gonna pull up my uh, mailing labels now uh, and uh, here's what I'm gonna get. So these are my mailing labels and these are gonna be for the uh, 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 at least 30 of the properties, okay? So these are all properties that are behind on payments. Now I'm going to ask you to be tactful, okay? Um, you know, don't, don't be calling people up and saying, this, this looks like I got seven pages of it. That's maybe all of them. So I think it is all of them. So, so uh, you know, again, I'm a big believer in knocking on the door. Now, if I knock on the door and there's no do not knock list, although technically San Diego has an ordinance against uh, soliciting door to door. Well, I'm not soliciting. So, you know, I'm going to knock on the door and I'm going to say, hey, how are you? Uh, do you know anybody who's thinking about selling their property here? You know, we're, we've got buyers, it's the craziest market. I can't believe we have 194. I wouldn't say that because then they're going to know that you know that they're in foreclosure. Um, but but there's 194 properties just in the last three years, right? I, I think there's got to be at least 10 listings there, okay? Um, so how do I get those? You know, I'm going to get those by knocking on the door and saying, hey, you know anybody in the area who's trying to sell their home or has thought about selling their home? Again, check the MLS to make sure that these aren't listed, okay? Um, listed property. So you want, want to make sure you do that. You don't want to solicit the listing of another broker. So um, so you don't have to say that I see that your house is going to the back to the bank. You know, instead have a, a tactful conversation. So on that note, let's take a look at a couple of things. So I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I, I uh, prepared for you. So let's take a look. So I've got, uh, I've got my... Uh, Short sale fraud. Uh, see, that can be my, my first one. Look at this. Uh, first of all, I have my listing input sheet that, that we use in our office that I've already filled in a lot of it already um, so that I can, you know, I know what I'm looking for as far as the MLS is concerned. Um, and uh, then I've got my, my uh, uh, short sale negotiators. I did not put these in any particular order, but uh, my short sale negotiators. Now, you're going to see that a lot of these were just revised just recently. This is less than a year ago. Um, so short sale negotiators, tough, tough subject. We have a, a broker in our office who, who is, uh, has taken a listing in, uh, in Point Loma, I'm sorry, in uh, Pacific Beach. Um, and it is, uh, uh, there's no notice of default filed against it yet, but it, clearly the owner knows he's behind on payments. So before you run out there and hire a short sale negotiator to help, you need to read this article, okay? Some of these people can be really good at what they do, uh, but we have some laws that we want to avoid um, so, uh, so what about the short sale negotiator? How do you describe that to your client? And again, I need to send all this to my agent because, or Linda's agent. I don't have any agents. So, um, make sure they're properly licensed. They have to be a broker or a licensed salesperson working under a broker. Um, so there's a lot of these criteria out there that are going to rule a lot of people out. So, uh, impact of Mars on short sale negotiators. Um, and again, uh, so some really good information. Payment of the fees. 
uh, and advance fee issues. Remember, you, you know, the DRE is very clear. You may not collect an advance fee. Um, and remember the short sale negotiator, because um, we have some laws out there like the foreclosure consultant law. Um, the, 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 whoever's going to do the negotiation, whether it's you or the short sale negotiator, um, remember that you may not negotiate the loan. You, you may only negotiate the sale. This is, this is a, a problem where a lot of people cross that line. Um, I remember when um, the, the DOJ uh, filed uh, uh, actions against 16 attorneys, even the attorneys, right? So they were doing loan modification. So a loan modification is clearly negotiating the loan. You're not allowed to negotiate the loan. You're allowed to negotiate the sale. And so that's a lot of what this says. And so I always get credit for writing these articles. I didn't write these articles. They're just they're great pieces. So uh, the uh, short sale negotiator cannot collect an advance fee from a seller unless the advance fee agreement and materials have been submitted to the DRE for review. And again, that's B&P code 10085. I mean, when they put a statute next to it, you know, it, you don't want to do that, right? Because that's a, a, a violation of law. And remember, no, you know, insurance, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to send all this to our guy. He's a really good broker. He, he's, he's just so cautious about what he does. Um, and, uh, uh, I have a tremendous, tremendous amount of respect for him. He was one of my students back in 20, uh, 2003 uh, at UCSD when I was teaching real estate practice there um, and uh, kind of weaved around with different brokerages over the years. And then he used to take me to lunch. So every every three months we would meet at Sammy's in, in Carmel Valley. And then finally one day he says to me, he says, why don't I just come work for you? And I said, nobody works for me. You have people work with me. Uh, and it's been a lot ever since, right? It's been 15 uh, 15 years, I think, since that time. So so anyway, be very familiar with this, okay? This is important stuff. Again, I will send this to you. Send me an email. Ask me specifically for what you want, um, and, uh, and I'll make sure that you have that. And so look at this. Here's the DRE bulletin from 2011. And yes, they are still doing um, the buyer may be charged the fees, right? Um, but again, properly licensed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so anyway. Um, and, and in conclusion, so there's my conclusion. Um, that's a very important document. Okay, so let me take you to the heading of that again, so you know what it is that we're talking about. <clears throat> that's my short sale negotiators revised less than a year ago. Okay, then I have my uh, California withholding tax on the sale of real property. So, so even if the property does go short, if it's a pre foreclosure, chances are it's going to probably be short. So, if it's a pre foreclosure. Um, they still get taxed, right? And they and and they can be taxed for the, what what the law refers to as the gain, which is the amount of forgiveness, right, of debt. And so, uh, uh, so again, they need to talk to tax people about that. I don't have any problem having the the seller sign off on this, um, but you know, how do we avoid you know withholding and you know, stuff like that? We're not going to help the seller evade taxes. That's against the law. So. Uh, um, anyway, great little article. Uh, this one goes back five years, so a little bit further back, still pertinent today. Um, then we have, uh, let me close a couple of these windows. Uh, then we have my, uh, uh, again, my short sale. Did I already do that one? Uh, no, I did short sale negotiators. Then we have the general information for you on short sales. And again, this was revised a little bit more than a year ago. Um, uh, under what circumstances the lender prohibited from going after the deficiency balance? So, you know, it's usually purchase money mortgages only. Um, there was no fraud in the inducement of getting the loan. Um, and so, uh, 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 so here's, here's all this information. Great, great stuff. Um, Lenders were making loans in amounts that ultimately became too difficult for borrowers to repay. I know people that have done federal time for, for uh, defrauding the lender, but uh, okay. So um, uh, subject to lender approval, do I want to go through any of that? Uh, I'll let you read that on your own. Um, but certainly it's a good read. We have too much to talk about today. Uh, so let me go back to that uh, heading. So that's my short sale heading. So my first one was the negotiators. My second one's going to be the tax withholding. My third one's going to be short sales in general. <clears throat> and then we have short sale fraud. 
Um, fraud is a very bad word. Um, I, I, I've sat in enough meetings with the district manager for the Department of Real Estate, and 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 she'll make a comment about something, and she'll say, "We think that's fraud." When I hear that word, I'm like, "Oh wow!" Okay, uh, er, everything <laughs> that. Uh, Ms. Kilpatrick says, I write it down, right? I did a presentation with her. We did a panel uh, when I was president in 2019 of SDAR, and it was it was me, Veronica, Gov Hutchinson, uh, Robert Sutherland, who's uh, who's one of the attorneys for Crest Insurance, um, and the four of us were up there. And and uh, and actually, uh, uh, was it uh, Dana Moore was asking the questions? And uh, uh, anyway, when she was still with us, which was a, a better time for us. But but anyway, so uh, you know, um, that was an amazing panel. I have two pages of notes just from stuff that Veronica said. So uh, be very well aware of that when they say fraud. Very bad, right? So definitely no ENO insurance. Okay, fraud is the most difficult to prove, but it returns the highest gain on the investment. Okay, so what is short sale fraud? What are the red flags for detecting a short sale scam? What is a short sale flip, folks? These are coming today. I'm seeing them already. So I'm seeing people doing crazy stuff. I'm seeing the investors uh, buying property. Um, a lot of them are not aware of uh, Civil Code 1695. Uh, which says that uh, you know four things are prom, uh, present. It's a residential one to four, which is what you and I usually work with. The owner is living in the property. The buyer is not going to live in the property. So anytime it's anything other than a natural person, they're not living in the property. I don't care what you do. Okay. And then the fourth thing is there's a notice of default filed against it. If all four of those things are present, that civil code 1695 is a crime to write the offer. So um, you, you must give the seller their statutory notice of the right to rescind the contract within five days of signing it. Um, again, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with that, if I go to uh, car.org, I'm gonna get out of my fast stats really quick here. Uh, let's go to uh, car.org. I'm gonna pull that up. <clears throat> I'm gonna go up here where it says search and I'm gonna type in home equity sales. And I'm going to hit my go button. And here it is. NOD and investor transactions, home equity sales contracts. Uh, this was re revised in July 30, uh, 31 of last year. So a little bit over a year ago, folks, you need to read this article. OK, so again, this is another one I've been giving credit for writing. I did not write this article. Um, brighter people than me. I'm sure Neil Kalen wrote this. Um, uh, but but here it is. Here's my four prompts right there. Residential one to four. Owner occupies the property. NOD has been filed. The buyer does not intend to occupy the property. So an investor, so any non-natural person, all four of those are present, then you know that's uh, up here at the top, 1695. So uh, it's the law. So, you, so we do have a form for that called the NODPA, which is the Notice of Default Purchase Agreement, right? But if you are working with someone who just, so you're working with a buyer and the buyer is not gonna live in the property, you need to look look out for those other three things. It's easy to look out for uh, if the owner is, uh, I'm sorry, if the owner is living in it. And if they're living in it, your ears need to be up, right? That's residential one to four. And then and then, then you look for that NOD, right? And if there's an NOD, then just use the NODPA. Now, the, the old law said that, the, um, that you had to post a bond, um, but the Supreme Court, the Schweitzer decision came back and said that uh, there's no bond available. So, uh, um, <laughs> excuse me, um, there's no bond available. So um, so they made it unconstitutional. So uh, I was just looking really quick to see if I could find it. But uh, uh, bum, 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 bum. Um, it had a good intent back in the 70s when it was created. Um, and that that's uh, it, it had a good purpose. It was trying to protect the innocent widow, that kind of thing. Um, and when in fact, uh, um, um, and that was a problem. I mean, we had people that, you know, they, they owed uh, mortgage was twenty nine thousand dollars and and um, but it was worth seventy nine thousand. And the investor was coming in and buying the property out for from, you know, them for the mortgage amount. So they were literally fifty thousand dollars on the table. So uh, here is uh, and look at this two year contract rescission period. Whoops. Um, so. Uh, uh, bad, bad stuff. Let me tell you, this stuff is. 
this is wow you can really see it well on that computer okay all right so anyway i wanted to make you available that uh for that um and then and then the other one that i had told you about was the uh foreclosure consultant law and here's that uh and i think i've actually got that article for you foreclosure scams and the foreclosure consultant all law. So these are, are not short topics. They're, they're fairly uh, big, but if you're going to work this kind of stuff, you got no competition. Nobody's going to be competing with you to do this. So uh, I would say, you know, just be good at what you do. Okay. All right. So where are we? I want to take me back to my, uh, uh, that's my screen. So this should, what do you see? You see uh, other scams. That's funny. You're seeing a different screen than I am. Uh, 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 closing all that. Why am I not seeing the screen that you're on? Okay, so let's try it again. And we are here. This is the screen that we're on. Um, I got lost. I have too many screens open. This is part of the problem, you know. So being ADHD is very, very helpful. Uh, there we go. That's the screen you're on. There you go. Okay, excellent. So, you know, what kind of scams, things like that. So uh, this is a fairly extensive article. This one's going to be uh, 16 pages, short sale fraud, a very bad thing. Um, here's my foreclosure scam. So I did, I did actually pull it up for you. It's 11 years old. It is still current foreclosure scams and the foreclosure consultant loss. Remember what I said earlier, you may not negotiate the loan. You may only negotiate the sale. Um, and so pretty good article on that. Uh, and then I have my foreclosure timeline. Um, people ask me all the time, why don't you create a timeline for your uh, real estate transaction? Um, you know, but, but I've always uh, defended, you know, car doesn't even have one, but I've always defended it by saying, you know what, we really don't know. You know, I, I know when I walk in the front door, hi, my name is. And then after that, anything can happen. Right. So foreclosure timeline. So this will give you a lot of information, some of, the, of which I've already told you. So first loans on a residential one to four, okay. Owner occupied property. So again, civil code 2923. Uh, lender may not record a notice of default unless the lender has contacted the borrower uh, by phone or in person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and these are California laws now, okay? May not record a notice of default until either uh, at least 30 days has passed after either the initial contact is made uh, or the due diligence requirement is satisfied, okay? So uh, um, so this gives you a lot of interesting information. You know, so recording the NOD on day 31, um, on day one, you record the NOD, whichever way you do it. Um, and then we've got after the NOD is filed, then we then we do the notice of the re record, the notice of trustee sale. Um, and that can be, again, under uh, two separate columns here. Um, you're looking at essentially uh, four to nine months if, right? It's not likely they can get it done within four months. But uh, again, as I said earlier, it's going to take them a couple of months just to find out that it's uh, that the, the borrowers missed the payments. OK, so lots of really good stuff there. Uh, let me take you back up to the top so you can see the heading. It's called foreclosure timeline. <clears throat> and then we have our foreclosure prevention library, which uh, is kind of a, a favorite of mine. And, and I want to show you that because that's, you know, a lot of people don't know that that's out there. So let's take a look. I'm going to go up here to my homepage. This is the refresh button. It takes me to the homepage. I'm going to go into the secure transactions. I am still logged in. Um, I want to show you that we actually have a foreclosure prevention library. So these are all things I would be, some of this I'd be printing and, and I would be judicious about it. I would be knocking on doors again, check, make sure they're not, they're not listed in the MLS. Um, you still want to ask the question when you do talk with them as to whether or not they uh, have a listing. It may not be in the MLS, right? So, uh, but uh, you may not solicit that listing. So let's take a look at my, uh, where's my forms here? Um, Here's forms. So I'm going to click on my forms. And again, it's going to take me to add a form, which doesn't make any sense. I'm going to click on forms over here. And uh, why is it doing that? Oh, for God's sakes. Okay, let's uh, do this a little bit differently. I'm going to go back uh, just to get out of here. Let's pull up a, uh, let's pull up a template. 
because I want to show you the forms. That's all I want to show you. I don't have to go through all that other folks. Okay, so uh, um, so here we'll grab the uh, seller listing template. That's So I have a template for everything that we do, right? And so templates make just infinitely more sense. I, I treat everybody the same. Everything's done the same. I'm going to go up here where it says all forms, and it's going to give me my drop down that defaults to the California Association of Realtors. I'm going to click the drop down here and I'm going to go here to uh, my foreclosure prevention library. Does everybody see this? A lot of people say, God, oh, I never knew that was there, which is great. I'm glad you're here. I really am because you need to know about this. So foreclosure prevention library, I'm going to click on that. And now look, I've got a handful of forms. I've got my alternatives to foreclosure, avoiding foreclosure scams, foreclosure prevention resources, the timeline, foreclosure or short sale. Remember, a uh, foreclosure is going to have a, at least a 400 point hit on your credit. Uh, a short sale, maybe only 200. Foreclosure, you're not buying a house again for eight years. Short sale, you're probably buying again within two years. Um, what is your liability after foreclosure? Um, prop eight, property tax relief. Short sale process, what does the process look like? And then tips for both the buyer and the seller on, on uh you know, on how to, how to navigate that uh, short sale, okay? So those are excellent uh, things to have. I have a question in the panel and that's uh, still locked on zip forms. Crap, uh, good, there, there I was. I thought I was being smart. Thank you, Joe. Um, okay, so how about that? You see that? There you go, okay, so I apologize. So what I did was, thank you, Joe, for bringing, uh, calling that to my attention. So what I did, to go, so back to rewind, I'm, when I, when I pull up the forms in the transaction the, under the forms library up here on the right-hand side, I go here to the California Association of Realtors, I hit the drop down, and then I've reorganized mine. Yours may show up in a different part. That's a whole separate class. Here's my foreclosure prevention library, otherwise known as FPL, okay? For foreclosure, there's a lot of really good stuff in here. People just don't know it's there. Now, obviously, I, you know, we, we do MLS in San Francisco. We do... Bright MLS is probably the largest MLS in the country, and it's uh, most of the Eastern Seaboard. You know, we do transactions there as well. Um, and so uh, I'm going to go up here to Foreclosure Prevention Library. I'm going to click on that button, and then here's all the forms that I was talking about that you couldn't see. Thank you, Joe, for letting me know I was doing that. So <clears throat> you can see those forms got to be very helpful, right? Um, alternatives to foreclosure, I don't want to corrupt this uh, this um, template. So let's do this. I'm going to back out of this and let's just create a, uh, uh, we're in the templates. Let's create a new template uh, and we're going to uh, use the lease listing because I don't have that automatically set up to do anything. So we'll give it a name. We'll call it residential. Don't apply it. Uh, don't do anything else to it. Save. And so now it opens up in here. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click on all forms. Uh, foreclosure Prevention Library, Alternatives to Foreclosures. So let's take a look at that. What does it look like? Um, and here's what it looks like. So I just loaded it just now. So uh, this is going to be uh, a, uh, a document um, here, Alternatives to Foreclosure. So it's got my license number in there. It'll put my address, obviously, all that stuff in there. Um, and so this is the note to the homeowner. What is a foreclosure, et cetera, et cetera. This is the note to the homeowner. This is not necessarily for my purposes, okay? So, so alternatives to foreclosure, you can refinance, you can do a deed in lieu, um, uh, uh, bankruptcy. Again, we have a bankruptcy attorney in our office and, and uh, uh, he tends to be able to stop bankruptcies for, or for stop foreclosures from occurring. I say he tends to, but the people have to actually be, um, they actually have to have bankruptcy available to them. Um, other alternatives, you know, things like that. So that's what that article says. All right. So let's go back over there and let's uh, see if we can find. Uh, we're going to go back here and it's going to say, no, it's not going to say, um, so I can look at some of these other things. But again, these are all things you have available to you. It's just nobody tells you that they're there. So when I go to my all forms again, um, I'm in the foreclosure prevention, you know, avoiding scams, foreclosure prevention resources. This is an interesting one. Some of the stuff I've already shown you, but uh, let's take a look at this. Um, um, again, uh, foreclosure prevention. Uh, so there you go. Here's some resources. We've got HUD approved counselors. Uh, we've got Hope Now. We've got NeighborWorks America. We've got Make Home, Making Home Affordable, um, Office of the Comptroller. 
foreclosure prevention articles by Freddie Mac, um, other resources. So Fannie Mae, IRS, Franchise Tax Board, uh, FICO, right? Uh, Fair Isaac uh, Credit Organization. So, you know, these are other resources that are available. So, so you should make note of this. If you're going to be knocking on doors because you're going to be soliciting pre-foreclosure properties, I always say make it feel like, you know, you're, you're just knocking on doors in the neighborhood and you just happen to hit on theirs. Um, but again, I had somebody do that where they started off with, hey, you're losing your house to the bank. I don't recommend that. <laughs> That's not going to be a nice thing to do. So, so that being said, um, again, some of this stuff is included in that library, my foreclosure prevention library. It's got all of this stuff available to you, uh, how to access the library. So again, there it is. It says it's in your lone wolf transaction. Um, uh, oh, look at that. They even tell you, look at that, Joe. They even give you all the stuff I just showed you. Ha, ah, I didn't even know they had that. <laughs> hey, you know, for the first time, they're ahead of me. So um, how about rental properties and foreclosure? <clears throat> so uh, interesting rules. Rent skimming. I get people ask me about rent skimming. Rent skimming is, is not always uh, 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 happening, right? Rent skimming can frequently be the, uh, um, uh, you know, it has to be in the first year of the mortgage, you know, uh, revenue received from residential real property anytime during the first year after acquiring the property without first applying the revenue to payments due on deeds of trust encumbering the property. So that's rent skimming. So, so, but at year two, year three, no, that's not rent skimming anymore. There's also a federal offense for that. Uh, here it is up here on the next paragraph, equity skimming, uh, limited to residential one to fours, default at time of transfer or in default in a year of transfer and which are HUD properties, uh, have HUD insured loans or have VA loans. So obviously they don't apply to conventional financing. It requires a pattern or practice of purchasing properties with an intent to defraud. So that's going to be a tough one, right? So uh, be aware of that. That's, uh, that's again, great stuff. Um, lenders issues with the tenants, uh, owners issues with the tenants. So, so we know we have uh, cash for keys. You know, we have things like that, but this is a great, uh, a great article uh, that should help with, you know, uh, you, uh, you know, and being able to answer questions again without negotiating the, the, uh, the loan itself. Okay. Um, deficiency judgment chart after foreclosure. People ask me all the time about that. You know, what's that going to look like? So here is a residential one to four. I always tell owners, if you're going to be in default, don't leave the property, right? The, the law handles you differently when you live in the property than if you exit the property. If you exit the property, first thing the bank does is come in and winterize it, which makes no sense in San Diego at all, right? Uh, uh, but but uh, here's what happens with the other stuff. So uh, again, is it a recourse loan? If it's non-owner occupied, it, it can be, a, if the original loan was a non-owner occupied loan, then it, it could be a recourse loan. Um, the, the, over here, lender purchase money loan or refinance of lender purchase money loan is a non-recourse loan, which means they can't, essentially can't come after you later. Okay, so no deficiency judgment of senior or junior uh, lien holder. And so this gives you some you know, again, I would print this because, boy, this is awfully big font. <laughs> so you, you probably want to print it so that you can read it. But but uh, um, good information in there as well. OK, everybody good with that. Uh, let's get out of that. I knew it was going to take me past. Uh, we're we're going to be done in time. We're going to be done early, but uh, not real early. But OK, um, don't be sued for do not call. I, I tell people all the time, if you're going to be calling people, you know, make sure that they're that, you know, you look them up on the do not call registry. I used to teach this as a class, um, but, uh, you know, it hasn't been as much call for it. No pun intended. But uh, um, auto dialing, mojo dial, things like that. Um, again, this was just done in, in 23. So uh, uh, we've seen some big, big people go down for this. So. Uh, uh, you know, lawsuits continue to be brought against firms, uh, including real estate firms. We saw that happen with a very high profile broker just recently. Um, and so, you know, I know that there are people out there. They just they could they went at six o'clock in the morning and they get on the telephone. Um, but if you are calling to solicit business, then, you know, you're going to be subject to that. Do not call. Um, so we have do not call, do not fax, do not email. Um, uh, as I said earlier, we don't necessarily have do not knock. Um, uh, and so anyway, uh, TCPA. So we've got all that stuff. So again, I'll send that to you. Um, I've seen some pretty hefty fines from those. Um, how about um, 
the the one we just referenced a second ago, the do not call, do not fax, do not email laws. So this was just revised in, in August of last year. So uh, are there any exemptions? And so again, we go to question number 12 for that. Um, let's see if we can get there to question number 12 pretty easily. Uh, applicability, that's 13. So certain types of calls are exempt. Well, first of all, you know that charitable organizations are exempt. And oh, by the way, so are political organizations. So, you know, they carved themselves a niche when they created the new law. Uh, they wouldn't allow realtors to be exempt from it. So we're, we're stuck with it. So you have to have written permission, uh, have an established business relationship, usually within the last 18 months. You've got a personal relationship. By the way, it being in the MLS does not create that unless you were the seller's agent. Uh, and then there we go, tax exempt nonprofits. Uh, so uh, anyway, so just be aware that that can get a little dicey. I don't think this stuff is really that complicated. I think you should just read through it really quick. Uh, do not call rules. So for telemarketing and robocalls. And, and so again, the, the uh, Telephone uh, Consumer Protection Act, the TCPA, um, brokers should establish telemarketing office policies. Um, and then, of course, then, then the agent violates that. And then our defenses, they violated our policy. Um, uh, if you mistakenly call someone, you've got to meet these requirements. The office policy provisions have already been established. The broker maintains a list that may not of people that may not be contacted, um, maintains a process to prevent calls on the list, and maintains a version of the national registry and and the broker maintains a process to ensure that the do not call list is not used for any purpose other than compliance with the law. So uh, that's how you avoid liability when you make a mistake. Um, I always taught that you, know, you just tell them, I'm really, really sorry to have bothered you. Uh, I will make sure that you show up on our company's uh, list. Uh, I'm not a big uh, cold caller anyway, but uh, I would tell you that uh, check with your broker, see what your broker's policy is on that. That's always my way to drop kick it out of my realm. Uh, and uh, and that's usually going to be your safe harbor for that. But uh, again, remember that if your broker has a policy and you're not aware of it or they have one and you're violating it, remember that you could have a problem because the broker is going to probably say, well, here's our list of, you know, this is our policy and you chose not to follow it. Okay. All right. Um, so that's my quick guide, uh, uh, telemarketing and robocalls. Let's talk about uh, the uh, federal do not call list. Um, again, whoops, this is one we've already done. So I'm going to close that one. Um, and then here's my foreclosure scams and the foreclosure consultant law, which we just saw a minute ago. Um, and yes, believe it or not, the bad guys are out there doing all this. So you don't want to be one of those people. And then finally, my taxation, which I think we've also already covered. So I already had all that out there. So, so good. Any questions about any of that material? Good. I got to take a look, make sure you all can see it. I'm going to close that. And again, if you want any of this, let me know. Just send me a, a oops, close my screen. Look at that. You will need to see a bigger picture of me. Um, so, um, um, uh, again, this information, a lot of this information is going to be included in here under your, um, your foreclosure prevention library. Um, I think that's going to be really, really helpful and it'll be very, very current. Uh, so I would definitely make use of that. Um, let me see what else was I going to show you. I've got a couple of things left here, uh, back to my, uh, platform. So, um, I want to make sure we're covering what we need to be covering. So let's go to, uh, there's, there's my, uh, I already showed you that, National Flood Insurance, uh, CRS data. I showed you how to create your labels. Um, power prospecting. Let's say that you are not searching for foreclosure properties, right? Um, you can do a lot of the same kind of stuff. You can search by street names. You can search by zip codes. Um, I probably wouldn't put subdivision unless you have the exact subdivision name, um, uh, you know, date of last sale, you know, uh, a lot of people don't solicit, you know, don't bother calling people that have bought their property within the last three years. The theory being that they're not likely to be the seller of a property within three years. And so again, use your discretion, whatever you want to do, but there's obviously other criteria in there that you can use in your search. And that again, 
Uh, we've already shown you how to do that with the uh, power prospecting for uh, the America Way property, for example. Um, on the America Way property, let, let's go back to that just for a second. So I'm going to go, um, I, I want to search, advanced search, map search. Um, I want to do a search um, where my street name is America Way. So let's just do that really quick. And I want to show you what, what my method of, for my madness is. Uh, if I can get the cursor to work, there we go. America, uh, whoops, how do you spell America Way? Um, there it is, clear. Okay, so now I'm going to do this just because I want to pull up the subdivision name for you. So I'm going to click on my submit button. There are 68 properties on America Way. Here's America Way and Flower Hill Mall is right down here. Um, so let's pull up one of them. And here's my Spindrift Delmar Phase Two condominium. Uh, here is Spindrift Del Mar, probably right across the street. They have a different subdivision name for it. Um, uh, uh, Spindrift Del Mar Phase Two condominium again. So I'm kind of liking that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a, a copy of that because I don't want properties only that are on um, that are on uh, America Way. I want all of them in, in that area. So I'm going to go ahead and then I'm going to delete my references to America Way. And I'm going to type in that uh, subdivision name. And uh, of course, California Consumer Protection Form shows up. That's great. Okay, so that's not going to do us any good. So we're going to do the uh, spin drift. And then there they are. They all pop up. So here's, let's just do spin drift Del Mar. And uh, we're going to update our search here, uh, update results. <clears throat> and again, this is going to give me all of the homes in spin drift. Okay, so um, so again, you know, 801, 802, 803, 805. Remember, it's it's like a walk, like a walk score. I can walk from door to door, and I'm going to know the names of these owners. Okay, so you know, unless you're running for office, I would recommend that you not necessarily call them out by name. You know, but uh, but you certainly want to start the conversation at that point. Everybody okay with that? There's Jeff again. 811, 813 is Jessica. Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, um, good. And notice there's just pages and pages and pages, at least 10 pages. And then we're going to end it with 10. So when we get into, into street addresses that say spin drift, we're up at the top. That's going to be up at the very top of the development. Um, and those are going to be what we refer to as the big houses, right? So uh, uh, let me see if I know anybody here. Uh, no, I don't know anybody offhand. The series sounds familiar. Um, anybody? No, I don't, I don't know anybody up there. I'll be darned. Right, look at that. Reliance way. These are all up at the top up here. You see up here, 141. Those are going to be up there at the very top. Okay. All right. Let's see what else to show you. Let's take a look. Uh, that's my property search. Again, I think the most, the, the biggest redeeming value of all this was doing my foreclosure search. Um, and again, remember, uh, foreclosure type, pre-foreclosure, only active records, uh, and uh, and maybe my filing date, I'm only going to go back uh, three years, right? So what did I do here? I did uh, 2016, uh, and then over here, uh, maybe uh, 9, 12 of 23, let's do 9, 30. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hit my submit button. So now, now I'm going back roughly seven years, 1,500 properties, folks. But again, we check the box that said active records only. So these are, are still being negotiated, if you can believe that. That's just great. Again, check on them. It should tell you when you pull up the property, it should tell you if there's any MLS information on it. So I clicked on this one here on Darwin Place uh, in 92154. And then down at the bottom of the page, it will tell you whether or not there's any MLS information. So uh, no listings found for this parcel. Now that just tells you it's not currently in the MLS. It doesn't mean they're not listed with somebody. Okay, again, this one's uh, this one is a blue, light blue, so it is a pre-foreclosure property, okay? All right, any questions about any of that? I know we've covered a lot, a lot of material. Joe, personal question. You're going to ask me a personal question. <laughs> so, so the uh, nobody can see the question pool um, except me. Um, but I'm not sure what you mean by a personal question. So, uh, anyway, uh, if you have a question, uh, uh, please, or I can talk to you afterwards. We're almost done. So, uh, um, okay. So, let me take you back to my PowerPoint. 
Um, and again, thank you. You know, you joined us for this. I, I did. I promised to let you go just a little bit early today, um, but I got a couple other things to tell you really quick. So uh, CRS tax is the courthouse retrieval system. That's what it stands for. Um, transactions that form only has buyer. And so, OK, Joe, I'll talk to you about that off camera. We'll do that later. Um, so um, county tax records, uh, important for a number of reasons. Tax autofill I showed you. I told you it was going to be hands on. And so that's what we did. And so, uh, again, I want to thank you for being here. Um, I'm putting all of these uh, webinars up on the YouTube website. And I, I need to let you know that we're switching to podcasts. So I, I know San Diego is uh, pretty much just letting me finish the year off. Um, so we're probably I'm probably going to switch to podcasts. Um, I've got some zingers coming up. I've got some attorneys that want to do podcasts with me. I'm actually going to be doing podcasts for the Department of Real Estate. I've got a, in fact, I've got to send uh, the the uh, the Assistant Commissioner of Marketing the uh, some forms, and I'm going to be doing a first time you know uh, home buyer. They, they they have discovered that the majority of complaints that they get at the Department of Real Estate are first time home buyers. So um, so I'll be doing a podcast with the Department of uh, of Real Estate. Um, uh, thank you, Rory. That's nice. You know, I like CRS. I really do. It's a great program. Nobody's using it. I just I, I just don't get it. But um, I will be doing a podcast for the Department of Real Estate. I think I'm doing it on Friday of next week. Um, they've asked me to obviously do the legal documentation and things like that. You know, why are first time home buyers, you know, uh, <clears throat> feel uh, filing complaints? They're filing complaints, folks. And, and it's like I kind of would pay attention to that. And they're first time home buyers which tells me somehow we're letting them down. Um, you know, sometimes I do, I talk to real estate agents that I'm sure don't really know. I mean, it, it's going to be hard to hit, hit the high standards on things, but, but, you know, you don't want to misrepresent stuff and you don't want to be arrogant about it where you just kind of slam them through it and then, and then hope they don't come after you. They filed a complaint to the Department of Real Estate. The, the law requires the Department of Real Estate to investigate the complaint. So, uh, Anyway, I load all this up on the YouTube website. Um, get your QR code reader ready. Here it is. If you want to uh, go straight to the website. And then uh, um, you, you can also go to at Burke Real Estate Consultants, Inc. You can type that into your browser um, and that'll take you to the website. Um, uh, I created that. I'm very proud of it. Um, we also have bit.ly links. And so I created uh, this. Actually, uh, our marketing guy actually created this. I uh, did a great job on this. So bit.ly forward slash real hyphen estate hyphen ed. That will take you to, to the website um, on our per, on our business website, Burke Real Estate Consultants. Uh, we will be posting the um, the uh, general information page, the Department of Real Estate wants us to post the general information stage so that um, the people that sign up for the classes, and again, it looks like I'm going to do one in Los Angeles coming up here, um, but, um, you know, five hours continuing it on the purchase agreement, three hours continuing it on the buyer representation agreement, and I'm, I'm waiting for San Diego to say, come do it here. Um, they're aware that I've already been approved for it, so I don't know what they're going to do, but I guess we'll find out at some point. Um, and then also, please remember to like and subscribe. So when you go there to the to the YouTube website, again, this is where you're going to find all this stuff. You also find our podcast, by the way, as we start to do those. I did one the other day. Just you know, I was talking to another broker, and I said, "Do you mind if I turn this call into a podcast?" And so I didn't realize I was live. Um, I had a whole bunch of people on there. I mean, I didn't think I was that big a deal. But uh, in the immortal words of one of our agents, um, you know, one of our agents says he's got a buddy that does uh, uh, duck decoys and, and he's got over 300,000 people on his download list. So I'm just kind of fascinated by that. So uh, anyway, if you like it, I appreciate it. I don't even, they're not paying me for it. So, so, but, uh, but I thank you for doing that subscribe if you want to get the updates. So like I did this class a couple of months ago um, and I've done all new stuff in here that I didn't have the first time, the, the last time I did it. So, so that would help you out. Plus, at least if you go there, you'll know when I'm doing a podcast. So we're going to start scheduling those on a regular basis. Uh, we're going to be talking to, uh, calling it uh, muffin, uh, Muffins with the Mayor, just because I'm, I'm known as the Del Mar's Mayor. 
even though I'm not the mayor of Del Mar, I'm, I'm referred to as the mayor of Del Mar. I'm just kind of that guy everybody knows in Del Mar. So um, we're going to call it muffins with the mayor. Uh, I'm thinking about Saturday mornings, you know, early, uh, you know, just being online, fielding questions for half an hour, an hour uh, until we grow, until it gets traction, that kind of thing. Um, but I want to help you. I want you to look good, right? So uh, um, uh, other stuff you want, uh, you know, education at SDAR.com, send them an email. You can always send me the email, copy them. That's fine. Um, I know that I'm kind of scripted into what they're going to have me do for the rest of the year, which is kind of upsetting. But at the same time, I'm branching out on my own and doing other stuff. So uh, um, email updates, I send out email updates. They only go out on Friday or Saturday. Um, I, I'm very careful to make sure all the links work properly. Uh, I, you know, I, I want, um, you know, I have a lot of, of people on that email list and that'll be the best way to find, you know, and again, on that email list, you'll have the link that you can click on. that takes you straight to the, um, to, to signing up for the webinars, uh, these webinars as they're occurring throughout the rest of the year. And then also to sign up for the newsletter, to sign up for the, that kind of stuff. So anyway, it's available to you. I don't put people on there unless you ask. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to spam anybody. So, uh, so anyway, uh, anybody else have any questions for me? Uh, uh, Joe, I will address your issue. Let's get on a, a call here in a minute. Uh, we'll, we'll do that. Um, and Rory, thank you so much for your comment. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I love CRS. Oh God. I mean, especially knowing what realist was. And again, I'm not bashing them. It's just that it was just not, you know, it wasn't working. So, um, but, uh, CRS is, is great. I really like it. So, uh, if there aren't any other questions, um, I want to thank you all for being here today. I very much appreciate the value of your time. Uh, and I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. So, uh, Again, hopefully I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Uh, and uh, as we say from my hometown of Del Mar, I look forward to seeing you around the track. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.